But Timmy, when uh, we have a future Hall of Famer on deck, we don't waste any time. He is Jerome McGinley. He of the 662 career goals, regular season and postseason. And uh, he, along with Hockey Canada, are doing some really good things, which we'll dive into in a second. First off, I want to welcome in a Hall of Famer. Timmy, if you want to give me some horns for the one oh, and only Jerome McGinley. Some, we just can't bring on Jerome McGinley. <laughs> Jerome, how you doing, man? It's been a while. How are things? Hey, guys. They're really good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. How are things with you guys? Very good. Hanging in. Just doing live shows from our basement, you know, normal 2020 <laughs> stuff. Normal 2020. Uh, we're we're going to get to the Hockey Canada Foundation Assist Fund here in a second. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a really important story from today. But I just, uh, first of all, how, how's the fam- how, how are you doing as a family? How are, how are things going? And when do you think you'll be officially inducted into the Hall of Fame? Because now you're there unofficially. But when do you think that ceremony will take place? And have you written your speech and all that fun stuff? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure when it will take place. Um, I got a question asked too. Is it, uh, you know, is it a bit of a, a bummer? I guess not having it this year. And honestly, no. It's uh, it's still. I'm still thrilled, and, and it's such an honor and excited. And whenever it does happen, I totally understand. With COVID, obviously, it's uh, uh, the right call to postpone it. But whenever it is, uh, very excited. Uh, hopefully. You know, I even heard talk, maybe there'll be two groups together. I think that'd be pretty cool. And uh, it would also mean a shorter speech, shorter speech for us. <laughs> and uh, I would like that idea. You like that idea? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. for sure. Hold on, uh, hold on. Jerome, uh, how many scrums, how many scrums in your that's life? Why? You that's done. probably why. Yeah. But I've seen you. I've been, I was lucky enough to be in the room for a few. I've seen you up close. You are a natural. You are all natural, Jerome. Well, like, uh, come on. Uh, very kind, but no, no, it's, uh, I can't sleep for days before. And, uh, um, you know, whenever it's been, uh, I'll tell you when the retirement speech I had in Calgary, when the flames were really nice to, to do that for me, I, I couldn't sleep for like a week. And my wife was sick of me hearing it, trying to talk it over. It was like, uh, it was, it was cool, but it was so stressful, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, nope. A short speech sounds good. And, and, uh, just to be there with the other guys in the classes, it, it would be awesome and have family and friends there, uh, I uh, look forward to it whenever it is and um, still still pinch myself and still a huge, huge thrill and honor. It's so crazy to me that you played so many games in the in the NHL and you get nervous having to talk in front of people. <laughs> like for me, it would be the complete opposite. <laughs> um, we, we didn't get the chance to congratulate you on the call that you received from the Hockey Hall of Fame. And I, I could hear it in your voice a little bit there. Like what's what's getting that call like? Oh, it's uh yeah, it, it was it was it was very surreal. Um, really, the whole experience of uh, playing, you know, now that I look back on my career and getting a chance to play 20 years in the NHL and, and thinking I remember, you know, working towards it and going to junior and Kamloops and and you know, then you you check the the draft ratings and where I'm rated and am I going to get drafted? That'd be so awesome. And then to to get drafted in in Edmonton, which uh, where I was born and, and I grew up in St. Albert, just outside of there, was like a dream come true alone. And then to play my first NHL game and everything flashes back. And, and it's like, you're just working away, trying to establish yourself and, and, and keep, keep going. And every year there's a different goal. And obviously first it's to get in the league and then you want to be a a regular. And then you want to, obviously it's then the focus becomes completely winning. um, And that every year you're always working towards that. And then all of a sudden career's done, you know, and it feels like it was just like, bam, that. So, Oh uh, man, I was so blessed, and uh, um, you know, to get the actual call was like I never dreamed of, you know, getting to the Hall of Fame when, when I was younger. I dreamed of playing in the NHL and right. couldn't, you know, watching Rock'em Sock'em hockey on uh, <laughs> the bus trips and watching, you know, Sackick and Iserman and, and Gretzky and Messier, and, and you know, they're in the Hall of Fame, and to actually get to be in there with them is, is beyond, um, you know, fortunate and blessed. So it, it's awesome, and it's neat to share with my family and friends and couldn't do it without a lot of help and and uh it's been a, it's been an amazing journey hall of famer elect jerome mcginla here on tim and sid um jerome what did you make of that bubble uh what 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 did you make of how the guys acted in the bubble it's one of the more unique things we'll ever see and could jerome mcginla have handled the bubble <laughs> well it depends what age i was um <laughs> uh, yeah i was very impressed <laughs> you know, the, 
the uh, I was I was really impressed. I thought you know without fans there and and uh, it would take them a while to get up to speed and be great games and stuff. And man, right from the start, you know maybe a two or three games in, it was it's the playoff speed and and great. You know like the the games were really good. Um, you know I, I over the years I've watched more and more hockey now as our, uh, we have three kids, sixteen and then two boys that are fourteen and twelve and and the boys really like watching hockey, so it's on a lot now and. Um, you know, so I got to watch some of the playoffs, but man, it was, I was impressed with how they, they adjusted and got right back into it full speed. And it was some great games. Um, but yeah, the bubble, uh, I think, I think it's gotta be easier on the young guys. I'm, I'm just guessing. I mean, I talked to a few people, but if you're playing video games and you're hanging out and you just make it in, I, I think it's hard on everybody, but I, I can only imagine how hard it'd be with uh, the guys with the young families and, and being away and, um, you know, it, it, and the wives at home and, and all that. So I was very impressed and it was, uh, it was obviously worth doing and, and for the guys who won, but it's it definitely, you could see it was, uh, it could be a big challenge. One of the best of our generation, Jerome McGinley joining us here on Tim and Sid. Okay. So you mentioned the family and you mentioned your little ones at home, which is why I think uh, us hearing this story about the hockey Canada foundation assist fund uh, hit close to home. And the Foundation Assist Fund will donate $1 million worth of registration fees uh, to qualifying Canadian youth registered with Hockey Canada sanctioned associations for the 2020-2021 season. Uh, I got two little ones at home. You mentioned your three. It's so important to keep them busy and so important to keep them busy with things outside the house, which has been made even harder by this pandemic. What made you want to get involved with this Hockey Canada initiative? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, when I first heard, you know, when I got asked to be an ambassador for this, I was uh, very excited. It's, I think it's an amazing program, um, Hockey Canada to donate a million dollars to the, um, the Hockey Canada, you know, foundation and for, you know, hockey is an expensive sport. We know that. And especially during these times, um, it, it, I imagine there's a lot of families that are, that are strained and even extra strained uh, because of it. And uh, I think it's amazing that, you know, whether you have one kid, you know, you can, you can apply for it at uh, uh, hockeycanada.ca, you know, slash assist fund, please go on and, you know, apply for it. And if it's one kid, you get $500. Uh, if you've already, you get reimbursed. I thought it was really cool. If you've already put the fees in um, and if you have two, three, four kids, um, what, whatever amount of kids, I, <laughs> Um, it, uh, it's 500 per kid and, and hopefully that can help, uh, encourage, uh, families and, and make the, uh, stress easier of getting their, their kids involved in the game. Or if anyone is, you know, debating it or whatever, uh, you know, I, I love the game of hockey. I love sports and it's been a huge, huge part of my life. And, um, so when I got asked, it was, uh, uh, uh a no brainer and I feel very blessed. And when I was younger, um, you know, my grandparents, I had my grandparents to help me out my, uh, parents were divorced at an early age and my dad was putting himself through school and had a new, new young family. And, uh, um, you know, I was very close with him too, but I grew up with my mom and, um, I was fortunate to have my grandparents, uh, you know, assist us and, and help us and be able to be a part of sports. And, um, some of my best friends are guys that played minor hockey with and stuff. So, and minor baseball and, um, you know, it, and I don't know if they wouldn't have been in there to help if I would have been able to play. So, I definitely feel very fortunate and, and I think sports as, as you guys obviously have a love of it and uh, helps in so many ways and uh, helps kids. Uh, so when it's safe and they, you know, safe to get back, I, I, you know, we need as many kids playing and being a part of it and enjoying it because uh, it helps in so many different ways, values, exercise, all that stuff. And uh, it's a great sport to be a part of. Jerome, allow me just to reiterate what you said about the specifics of the fund, because I think it's so important for people to know what this is here. And I'm going to read it straight from the press release. The Hockey Canada Foundation Assist Fund allows Canadians who meet the criteria and need financial hockey assistance to apply for up to $500 in registration fee reimbursements per player, provided the registration is with a Hockey Canada sanctioned association. Uh, it is it it is a really cool initiative. And I mean, and we... and you don't have to be a, a, a financial specialist to realize it's needed here. How, Jerome, just based on your experience and, you, and what you know of the game here, how how vulnerable a position is hockey in this country in this moment? Because it's not as if hockey fees were going down prior to the pandemic. Hockey fees have been an issue in this country for a long time, and a lot of kids have been unfortunately priced out of this sport. 
you have a situation now where a lot of families across this country are going to have to make some difficult, difficult decisions, not just about sports and recreation, but about a lot of things over the next 12, 18 months, hopefully not longer. Um, how important is it from Hockey Canada's perspective to do this on their end, to, to help people out? Because we know we know what the decision will be in some households, and it's, it's, it's apparent. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for, you know, like... Um, you know, the numbers in the game, I don't really know where the registration is at right now, but I do know that hockey Canada wants to help and help ease the burden and, you know, recognize, you know, that this is a very difficult time. And, and also hockey is an expensive sport and, you know, they want to, I think it's great that the, the million dollars um, and it's going to a hundred percent of it goes to, um, you know, these registration fees. And if it doesn't get used now, it will get used later to do that. So, you know, yes, please go sign up and um, go look online at like uh, uh, at the hockey Canada.ca assist fund because to see if you and, and, you know, maybe it can help, you know, that decision if people are on the fence because it, it, it is a very expensive sport. And, you know, this is one way to help bring the cost down. But, you know, there's the more we can make our the sport of hockey accessible uh, to people and, and financially, uh, you know, not as burdensome it, it, it'll help the game grow because kids that kids that get in there you know young kids that get to crash around on the ice wear equipment they go faster than they can run sliding around i mean it, they they fall in love with the game but they got to be out there and um i know i know our own kids you know they, they they look forward to their practices and their games and and they always have and um you know it's i got to play in the nhl that's awesome it was it was so much fun and it was a truly amazing experience but minor hockey was every bit as fun. It was, you know, some of my best friends, the guys like that I, that I played eight and nine years old with and just being able to go out and be a kid. And, and uh, so I think Hockey Canada is trying to, to help kids and, you know, parents and families um, yeah. to continue to be a part of it, but, and to keep helping it grow in, in, in a tough time, because this is obviously a very tough time. And um, whenever it's safe to get back uh, out on the rinks and, you know, everybody, every province has, you know, their different guidelines and, you know, whenever it is safe, uh, I would love to see as many kids be a part of it because it is a great game and has so many values that it brings with it, being a part of a team and perseverance and working and just being fun. I still talk with buddies of mine that I grew up with about playing mini sticks in hotel, like, <laughs> you know, hotel hallways and stuff like that. It's, it's part of what you, what you grow up having when you play hockey and it's awesome. But before we let you go, Jerome, I just got to ask you, we had Joe Thornton on the show earlier and I'm I'm really curious what you think about one, the fact that he's still playing, and two, kind of joining a young <laughs> core in Toronto, and trying to do the thing that you did late, where he he was searching for that Stanley Cup. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I, I think it's awesome. Um, you know, his his family being from Ontario, I think it's going to be an amazing experience. And what, uh, you know, I think with him and Spezza, a couple great veterans, uh, really strong leadership to add to the group they already have. Um, and I'm not a huge Maple Leaf fan. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. not like, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but um, not that I'm not either. You know, I'm now as. Uh, it's but, more about um, respect for Joe. We it, know, we know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I do think it's exciting. I think it's, uh, you know, you go for it. I think part of sports is if it works with, you know, um, first of all, family, obviously there, it, it works and, and they're, they're going to do it and, and everything like that after that. Yeah. I think I love the idea of going forward and, and giving it your best and, um, and to do it in Toronto, if you could pull that off and be a part of a team there, that is, that is a good team. Um, what an amazing way to, to cap a career. And, and I think when you look back, um, you know, I had amazing time in Calgary. It was awesome, but I was happy. I tried and, you know, it didn't work out for me to win, but I had a great experience all the way through the years at the different places and seeing, you know, not always when you're the, the veteran and you're used to everything, uh, it's a much different experience going into a dressing room and, and being the new guy and, and not knowing where the tape is and, and not knowing where, you know, different stuff around um, that and, and trying to fit in and all that. And I, it was a, it was a great experience in each place I played and, and uh, learned lots in each place. And uh so, I, I mean, yeah, I was happy for him and excited, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Jerome, I'll, ne I'll, I'll never forget one of the more challenging moments of my entire career was trying to figure out where you were going. It was, it was, <laughs> there, was a, 
there, there was a ton of reports. Mine we were too. just trying to, <laughs> <Mine too. laughs> we were just trying to pin down where where Jerome was headed. Um, finally, Jerome, where where are you at with the game of hockey? Like, you want to get back in? You want to try something? What are you thinking? Uh, well, our daughter's sixteen. She actually turned sixteen today, so it's uh, hey. time flies. And then, uh, yeah, it's cool. Happy Sweet birthday. sixteen. And, yeah. um, and thanks. And uh, we have two boys that are fourteen and twelve. Uh, so I've really enjoyed being at home with them. I coach the two boys, both, uh, you know, co-coach their teams and try to make as much as I can. And it feels a lot of time. I love being around the rink and, and helping the kids and trying to learn and, and hopefully trying to make it fun along the way. Uh, but yeah, I, I really enjoy being part of it. Um, we're living right now in Boston, but we think we'll probably move back, uh, in another year there, um, with schooling and stuff and the kids want to, uh, go to academy, a hockey academy, and and uh, the school's good at the academy, but they don't have to take like the extra. They love the idea when they hear that you're done a little early at school. You know, not taking <laughs> Latin or whatever. So they're very pumped, the boys, and uh, um, you know, to to get a chance to go back to Canada and play in Canada. And so we're thinking we may do that, and then uh, just coach them. But it's going fast, and so I, I don't really know. I know that's a long answer, but uh, I, I'm enjoying being part of it now. I'm going to coach them. Uh, hopefully uh, for the next you know few years or whatever, and then um, see from there. But I really don't know. It's, uh, love the game, love being a part of it, but uh, um, I know that it, there's a lot of travel and all that stuff involved too. So with, with uh, I know coaches in the NHL work so hard and, and put a ton of time in. So it's easy to say, hey, I'd love to be part of coaching, but it, it is a huge commitment, even more so uh, time-wise than players and stuff. So uh, I guess I really don't know. <laughs> Sorry if I rambled on. No, that. you know what? You got the right answer there, my friend. You get hockey and you get to be a dad. That is, that's the daily double right there. That's awesome. Um, it, it's so great hearing your voice. I know there's a lot of folks in Alberta that love hearing when you call in. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely retweet all the links so that people can find out more about the Hockey Canada Foundation. This is fun. Thanks for doing this. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Good talking to you. Have, have a good night. Take care, Jerome.